considering the fact that it's, <laughs> we were at war. Many of the pilots who kissed these Filipino girls during the ceremony died while in action on the islands. It became known as the kiss of death. With the arrival of the squadron, there was no question this was a war zone. MacArthur had just made his famous return to the Philippine island of Luzon. The squadron would be attached to the 58th Fighter Group and be based at Porac on the island of Luzon. Not far from uh, where we were banking our camp, it was uh, the guns and the artillery, and the, we, we can see the, 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 the lights of, of the bombs because uh, two, three days before, the Isla has been invaded by by American army. So they were pushing the people out. And that night, I thought it was the, the last moment of my life. Uh, probably I, I didn't want to, to go to sleep because uh, probably I, I won't wake up anymore. Something that, that uh, is hard to explain. How, how do you feel? It makes... Uh, recall many things of, of your life, of family, the, your parents, your everybody. And uh, you ask God to give you another chance. Next morning, this place uh, uh, with uh, one bamboo, we had our flag going up on the air and with one record player, some of my friends played the Mexican national hymn. So it, it gave us a, a shot of uh, impetus of, of uh, something that uh, make, make us forget what had happened the night before. Although the P-47 was designed primarily as a fighter plane, the Japanese aerial threat had been virtually eliminated. The 201st main job turned to ground support. One of the first missions involved Lieutenant Fausto Vega. As we arrived to the initial point, I started my dive with five seconds of time between the initial point and release point of the bombs over the target. As I put my airplane down, I saw all these tracers coming at us from the artillery of the Japanese as if, as if they had been waiting for us. And it was supposed to be a surprise mission because we couldn't talk on the radio or nothing. But uh, finally I dove and dropped my bombs and pulled out. And as I was pulling out um, with a uh, tremendous speed that I had gained, I got up to about 6,500 feet and turned around and I saw uh, the explosions of our bombs over the target, which was tremendous. And uh, I felt very satisfied. I said, we did hit him right on the spot. And I was waiting for my wingman to join me. And I was I surprised that the one that joined me was the second leader of the second element, uh, Captain Moreno Arreola. And he was waving his microphone at me, like saying, I want to talk to you. So I grabbed the microphone and I said, what's happened? He said, they hit Cacho. Cacho was the name that we uh, used to call uh, Vega Santander. Justamente vi cuando a Fausto. I saw when Fausto was hit. I saw a piece of his wingtip fly off, and his plane was spinning towards the ocean. I went down to see what had happened, but all I saw was his May West floating. There was nothing I could do. I returned to the formation. Garduño got my attention waving the microphone, which we were not supposed to use because of radio silence. Instinctively, I picked it up. It's one of the things that a person does without realizing the dangers. Unfortunately, Fausto was our youngest pilot. Desafortunadamente, pues Fausto era nuestro piloto más jovencito.
contradictory to what it appears on the uh, on the book of his history of the 201 and also on the book of the 58 fighter group which claims that that uh, Fausto Vega was killed in an accident it's not true and we are alive and we can tell exactly the truth of what happened he was the first pilot to were hit by anti-aircraft of the Japanese and the first pilot that we lost and uh, to me it's very important that everybody knows what happened and not just what the books describe about his death even if the 58 fighter group says it wasn't so or the Mexican book also says it was an accident it was not an accident he lost his life defending his country and that's I feel so proud of, of Fausto Vega. One young Mexican saw the fanatical dedication of the Japanese soldier. Me acuerdo de una misión excelente en que nos mandaron atacar a un convoy. I remember one excellent mission in which they ordered us to attack a convoy of Japanese trucks. The trucks were traveling on a road that followed the course of the Magallanes River. From the surveillance photos, our leader identified the location, and we got in combat formation, one plane behind the other. We began to look for our targets. When it was my turn, I saw eight to nine Japanese descend to the little beach next to the river. They got into position, some kneeling, and others standing in order to shoot at me. I could see the tracer bullets coming at me, so I began to maneuver my plane from one side to the other to avoid getting hit. Desplazar el avión de un lado a otro para que no me lograra andar. Al final, a los 700, más o menos 700 pies, 750, fijé el avión y derechito a los a los que me estaban tirando a mí. At about 600 feet, I positioned my plane directly at the men that were shooting at me. Then I fired my machine gun as quickly as possible. Finally, I pulled up and turned. I saw the Japanese on the beach dead. My eight machine guns did their job. I imagined that they were ordered to sacrifice themselves so that I wouldn't shoot at the convoy, but instead shoot at them on the beach. I regrouped with the others and returned to the base. Sacrificarse para que no tirara yo al convoy, sino al grupo de los japoneses que estaban en la playa. Ya me volví a incorporar y nos regresamos a la base. Strong bonds developed, and this handful of soldiers saw some moments of fun. As a way to ease the tension of the daily or sometimes two-a-day missions, pilots got together informally at the place that became known among the men as the aquarium. Bueno, yo era el, el más, el más eh, chaparro del escuadrón. Chaparro, eh, más eh, shorty. I was the shortest member of the squadron. Many times during training, I had to carry a machine gun, ammo, parachute, and life vest down to the flight line. You would only see a pile of these things moving down a path. They would say, there goes a duck. That's what they would call me. Because a pile was the only thing visible, I looked like a duck. Nevertheless, I acquired many hours of flight. I acted and was treated like any other pilot of average height. He was recognized by all of us in the military as being one of the shortest pilots. We would always kid around with him about his stature. He overcame our joking with his energy, kindness, and affection towards all of us. <laughs> 